Well, it's a great pleasure to have you here. Thank you. It's a great pleasure to be here. Lord, you came all the you. way from Tashkent, so we really appreciate that. I did, and it's always a pleasure to be here. And I have to say I'm leaving Sunday, and I'll be very happy to get back as well. Springtime in Uzbekistan, and uh, it's very, very nice. Navruz is coming up. We have some visitors coming to see us, which we're delighted about. And so I think it's going to be a very good spring as part of a very good year. And you've just started your second year yes. in, in Tashkent. What would be the defining features of uh, Ambassador Spratlin's time in, uh, in Uzbekistan? Well, you know, there are just so many special moments. Um, starting with my arrival, I have to say I was welcomed from the very beginning. Foreign Minister received me uh, just a couple of days after I arrived, and then I was extremely fortunate to have a, a meeting with President Karimov in order to present my credentials shortly after that. He gave a lot of time to the relationship with the United States and you know he has had a long time to look at this relationship and think about it and so I was very pleased that he took the time to spend with me on that. And that really launched a wonderful year. We had an Afghanistan briefing team that came out and talked about our security relationship. We know this is an extremely important part of the relationship for Uzbekistan because there's a lot of worry about what is going to happen in Afghanistan um, in the, the coming years. There was a lot of concern about the reduced military footprint of the United States. And so having that team come out and explain our vision for Afghanistan and what we thought the implications were for, the, for our partners in Central Asia, that was extremely important. So that, was, that got us off to a nice uh, start. We had Mr. Todd Chapman come, another security-related visit that was uh, from the Political Military Bureau to talk about the problem of ISIL. And then uh, we had Arun Kumar, a wonderful, very courtly gentleman come. He is with the Department of Commerce, uh, International Trade Administration, and he had some very good meetings, including with Mr. Zimov and Mr. Uh, Ganiev of the uh, Emferet. And that helped us talk about our commercial relationship and ways we might uh, make it easier for U.S. companies to come and do business in Uzbekistan. So that was very, very uh, positive. And uh, then we had some cultural events that really were exciting for me. We participated in the International Jazz Festival in Uzbekistan. We had the Ari Roland Band come, and that was a wonderful moment. Then I had the great honor of going down to Samarkand in August to participate in the Shark Taranalare Festival. It happens every couple of years. And um, our Deputy Assistant Secretary, Dan Rosenblum, was there with us. And to see the light show there in Samarkand was really incredible. And we had a Native American group come from the United States, and that was a fabulous moment. And then, of course, our capstone moment came in November when we had the visit of Secretary of State John Kerry, who came to Samarkand and met with uh, Foreign Minister Kamilov and his other counterparts from Central Asia uh, to launch what we hope will be a successful platform for talking about issues and potentially in the future maybe um, looking seriously at some results, so some things we might do together with uh, Central Asian partners. So that was, that was a big moment to have Secretary of State Kerry come. First time we'd had a Secretary of State visit since uh, former Secretary Clinton came. So I have to say my first year was a fantasy year. Very and busy. in the meantime, <laughs> it was busy. And I got to know our team, wonderful people working with us. I got to travel in Uzbekistan to Samarkand and Bukhara to Khiva and to the big historical cities of uh, Uzbekistan, eat lots of plov and be welcomed by many people. It was a, a very, very rewarding year. And I think that put us in a good place for this year. Many, many positive things happened in my first year, and I'm looking forward to more positive things happening yeah, in it my seems like you're going to be very busy. <laughs> yes, we're going to be very busy, yeah. but we're going to have fun at the same time. In the words of one uh, Uzbek official, you're working very hard to strengthen the relationship. Yes. Uh, he told me that you're working very, very hard and you've been aggressive at getting um, what you want done. So I guess that's a compliment. I, I hope so. Yeah. I mean, the word <laughs> aggressive sometimes, but certainly I like to let people know that there's what so much want. we can do in this relationship. And I, we as ambassadors are so fortunate to have these positions. You know, I'm lucky to be serving a wonderful president, President Obama, and we have a fabulous Secretary of State. I don't want to waste one moment of this great opportunity. And there are many challenges, yes. as you know. So as you work your way to accomplish all these tasks in front of you, are there any legal restrictions that you have to deal with? The kind of restrictions that are set by the U.S. Congress. The reason I'm asking you this is that 
the, the, the very well-known restrictions on military assistance to Uzbekistan that were a part of the U.S. state budget, State Department's budget for a while, mm -hmm. are not there anymore. So can we now say that there are no sanctions against Uzbekistan from Washington? Well, what I would say is uh, Uzbekistan is a country that always draws um, a great deal of interest. Um, in part because of its vision of what is necessary in its view to maintain stability in the country, uh, in part because of its very, very unique positions geostrategically, and of course because of its uh, amazing history and culture. But there have in the past been concerns about human rights and other issues that have caused our U.S. Congress to want to place restrictions. I don't want to suggest that every restriction has been removed and we don't necessarily fully understand the actions that were taken by the Congress last year. What I would say is that certain restrictions continue to apply on military assistance. However, I would also like to say that maintaining a good security relationship with Uzbekistan is a very uh, great priority for me and for the U.S. government. And it's for that reason uh, that I was very pleased to come back last month. I've had three trips to the United States this year alone. And last month in February, I came for what are called the bilateral defense talks. And that was a chance for our two militaries to talk to one another. Normally, the U.S. ambassador would not come. But because we had not had these talks in four years, I felt it was important to come and say, this is important not only for our militaries, it's important for our overall bilateral relationship. Because we do still face restrictions on the kinds of assistance that we can give to Uzbekistan. And Uzbekistan still has its own restrictions on the kind of assistance it wants to receive from the United States. So these talks were an opportunity for us to look at those two things and see what we might be able to do together. And I'm very hopeful that our five-year cooperation plan will soon be approved. So um, Uzbekistan made a decision last year that it would participate in our international military education and training program. Now, we haven't yet had anybody actually participate in that, but the policy decision of the government was a very positive one. So I would say that this is a relationship that's dynamic. Lots of things are changing. The United States does have certain concerns, and I think members of Congress, uh, from a due diligence point of view with U.S. values and U.S. law, would want us to look at these things very carefully. But there's also a recognition that Uzbekistan is a unique partner, uniquely placed to sometimes cooperate with us, as they did during the Northern Distribution Network, and as they do now in supplying electricity to Kabul and in having the only railroad that actually goes to Uzbekistan uh, to uh, Afghanistan. And so I would say that uh, the partnership in the area of security is one that is evolving, one that is developing. Yes, we still have some restrictions, but we also very pragmatically want to cooperate with Uzbekistan as Uzbekistan wants to cooperate with us when each of us sees it in our mutual interest. The cotton campaign, this international coalition fighting the use of forced labor in the cotton fields of Uzbekistan, has recently asked the World Bank to suspend credits to Uzbekistan until the government stops really, really stops its use of uh, forced labor. Uh, we know that the U.S. has always supported the presence of the International Labor Organization in Tashkent, yes. and you have also several times said that there has been progress when it comes to mm -hmm. fighting this issue. But the international coalition, the, the cotton campaign doesn't think so. They actually think that the, the situation has gone on worse, especially last year. And mm -hmm. our reporting actually confirms that too. So what is your position at this moment? Well, what I would say is uh, that it's very important, as you know, to understand the role of cotton in the economy of Uzbekistan. It's been an extremely important crop, crop for decades. Even if you look at the pottery of Uzbekistan that it's most famous for, the little cotton. Uh, Main character. Yes. <laughs> so it plays a very important role in the psyche of the nation and in the economy, especially as a hard currency earner. Over the last few years, there has been great concern, as you point out, about the way that the cotton is harvested, and actually the way it is uh, planted and the way it is weeded as well. And Uzbekistan has said itself that it wants to modernize this industry, it wants to mechanize it, and it wants to diversify the economy as a whole. And the United States fully supports that, which is why we have backed their work with the World Bank and the International Labor Organization. Uh, I would like to just note that our own Department of Labor, which uh, does a report every year and looking at child labor, did say that their, their problems continued, but it also recognized the progress that Uzbekistan has made in greatly reducing, almost eliminating the use of children in the harvesting of cotton, which we see as a very positive thing. It must happen, and I think the government wants to do that and is taking strides to make it happen. But that leaves the issue of adults. Right. Last year, um, the government said that it was going to 
work toward not mobilizing certain categories of workers, especially those in the medical area and in the teaching profession. Unfortunately, I think they got started rather late and they were not able to fully implement that. But I do think that if we look at this as something that's not going to happen immediately, but something that the government is working very hard to change now, um, I am, I'm not, uh, what I would say is I would like to uh, see further developments in this. I take the government at its word that it is working on this and that it wants to change. And my hope is that very soon, through the process of reform and through the process of mechanization, through the process of eliminating certain categories of workers, that Uzbekistan will greatly reduce and I hope eventually completely eliminate uh, the use, the mobilization of the population for the harvesting of cotton. So yes, I think this is a work in progress. Yes, this is something that uh, the, the government itself is working on. I think the fact that it's cooperating with the World Bank and with the International Labor Organization on something called a Decent Work Country Program is extremely positive. There's much more work to do, but I think it's important to give the government some credit for, first of all, its recognition that this is an issue, and second of all, its effort to take steps. Now what we have to do is have the rubber meet the road and actually implement um, the, the very, I think, important intentions that they have set out for themselves. Have you ever advised the Uzbek government to talk to the cotton campaign? I would say that the cotton campaign is an important international voice, but it really is up to Uzbekistan as it is up to any government to decide which international partners it wants to work with. I do think, uh, and I've actually talked to the cotton campaign myself, and I do want to say that I, I think that there is a role for the international NGO community. But I think it's up to the government of Uzbekistan to choose its own interlocutors and partners. And while I think um, that there could be a constructive role to be played by talking to the cotton campaign, it's up to them to decide who their interlocutors are going to be. You have been spending a lot of time traveling around the country. Mm -hmm. um, how do you assess the, the economic situation, specifically the business climate? The Uzbek, the Uzbek officials who spoke here last fall mm -hmm. and in, in a regular business forum basically said that the country is wide open for American businesses, that the system is reforming mm -hmm. itself, Western businesses should feel comfortable enough to come in. Mm -hmm. But we also know that the corruption is still a way of life, um, things are really tough, and you have this huge business scandal involving big mobile mm, companies right. um, and involving the presidential family. In, U.S. is investigating it now. There have been some major developments recently, and I know that you will not be commenting on this case because I'm sure you will see it's still ongoing, but it has put the level of corruption in Uzbekistan on the world map. There is a global attention now to this incredibly huge issue. How do you see the, 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 the business climate? Uzbekistan is a unique country. It's the only country in Central Asia that borders all the others. A country of more than 30 million people. A country with tremendous uh, natural resources and great human uh, capital. So this is a country whose potential is enormous. It uh, always has been and I think it will be in the future. I think that right at the moment, Uzbekistan, like every economy in the region, is experiencing some economic turbulence. We've seen this in their exchange rate, um, and we've also uh, seen it with their major trading partners. Uh, the Chinese and the Russians have had some challenges, as have the, the Kazakhs, and I think those do affect uh, Uzbekistan. At the same time, I think the government has worked very hard to try to maintain a certain level of economic stability in the country, and I was recently in Termez, um, and I was also in Novayi last, uh, last December, and I was uh, surprised to see some businesses opening up. I was surprised to see some economic activity, but I have to say that I am disappointed that there aren't more American companies in Uzbekistan. And I think as long as there are a few challenges that are well known uh, in Uzbekistan, it will be very difficult for more American companies to go. Um, but I think American companies always look for advantage where they can find it. We have several associations of business people who are always looking for opportunity in Uzbekistan. And I do think American companies can play a very important role in Uzbekistan. They have uh, a number of laws that they have to respect to make sure that their business operations are very clean. And they keep that in mind as they make their business deals around the world, including in Uzbekistan. So um, I think that uh, managing the, the challenge of an economy that probably is more gray than everyone would like to see, 
Uh, this is something that I think is going to change over time as the, I think the government moves uh, on its own reform program. I think a lot of lessons have been learned. And uh, my hope is that in the future, it will be possible for more American companies to be present in Uzbekistan, both in the area of trade and in the area of foreign direct investment. Uh, there are a couple of uh, good examples of American companies that are there now, but to have only uh, a handful of, of examples that you can count on one hand, that is not success to me. So I hope that the, and we always talk to the government about what we think is necessary in the business environment to make it more favorable for U.S. companies to be present in Uzbekistan. And I will continue to work for that as long as I'm there. Many young people in Uzbekistan, as well as professionals, uh, writers, ask us about opportunities in the United States, specifically educational opportunities, mm -hmm. uh, training opportunities. And we usually refer them to the U.S. Embassy in Tashkent, Good. to Please various, do. you know, um, websites. But uh, there aren't too many programs to apply. And we know that you have been talking about the importance of exchange programs, mm -hmm. trainings, and people-to-people -people, uh, yes. engagement. Is there any progress? Can we expect any new programs in the future or the old ones come back? Well, you know, these programs are really near and dear to my heart. I think there's just nothing better than being in that sweet spot of life uh, as a high school graduate going to university. It's just a golden time. And it's wonderful to attend university anywhere. And I was very pleased to be in Termez uh, last week, and I got to meet the rector and some of the students at Termez State University, a um, university with over 7,000 students and some interesting programs. But I said to them what I say to students everywhere. If you have an opportunity to leave your own country and go study elsewhere, what a tremendous opportunity that is. You can go and learn so many things. You can go and prepare yourself in so many ways and then bring that training, bring that education, that worldview back home and share it with other people. That's what our education exchange programs are all about. It's we not have, always easy to do that. It's but. not <laughs> always easy to do that. There's, there are issues of cost, there are issues of competition, there are issues of budget. Our resources are limited and we can't have all, unfortunately, I would like to have double, triple the number of students that we have going from Uzbekistan now. But I would say that among the countries of Central Asia, uh, we had the biggest spike uh, in percentage terms of students going from Uzbekistan to the United States to study from many other countries. So we now have not quite 500, a little less than 500 less students than. who are studying um, in the United States. There are many, many impediments, I understand. And I don't, unfortunately, see new programs coming online. But you can bet, just as you said, I was competitive and trying to go for the <laughs> things I want. You're fighting for I'm it. I'm going to fight for every student who is Good. eligible and desires to go to the United States and has the authorization to do it to get there because it's so important to Uzbekistan and it's so important to the United States. And how about also um, getting more of American media into the country to be able to report from the country so we finally get to uh, get to see what's really happening inside because you know how the Western media are always criticized for not yeah. mm -hmm. covering the country well or fairly right. or accurately. Um, do you think that we are missing a lot by not being there? Well, you know, first of all, let me thank the Voice of America because you are playing an extremely important role. Thank you. You are broadcasting across many platforms in the local language, in Uzbek, every day. And I think that's extremely important because you are, for many people, the daily window on the world, certainly the daily window on the United States. So keep doing what you're doing because I think that's extremely important. Very well. Um, I think, of course, we'd love to see more uh, international outlets in Uzbekistan. From the point of view of the United States, uh, the press plays a tremendously important role in bringing issues to light, in educating the public, in helping and opening the world. And so, yes, I would love to see many more press outlets uh, present in Uzbekistan. I think that's going to be a hard, uh, hard thing to try to achieve in the short run, but in the long run, I think a more open press environment and more press outlets is absolutely in the interest of Uzbek citizens. It's in the interest of the press as a whole. It's in the interest of the strength of uh, Uzbekistan's uh, ability to really tell its own story and make sure that it is understood by talking to reporters in country. But I think that that's going to be something that develops slowly over time. Thank you so much. You are very welcome. I wish you the very best. And to all of your listeners, all of those who are watching, um, I want to just say thank you for welcoming me and making me feel so 
uh, happy to be present in the wonderful country that Uzbekistan is. It has wonderful potential, it has some problems, but we want to help Uzbekistan work on those for the benefit of all 30 million plus people and of course my own citizens of the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you.